Hello everyone, I am Crawlers and um, today I am going to show you how I made the um, stop motion plastic model look cinematic in Battlefield 3. Um, here's a sample. Okay, now let's get to it. I got some milkshake, I don't want to get warm on me. Um, okay, open up After Effects like I've already done. And this should go without saying, obviously. And by the way, I will not be using any third-party uh, plugins, only what is built into After Effects. So, uh, you don't have to pay for any other plugins. Okay, now, uh, bring the footage that you want to use. Let's see, I have some right here. And import it into After Effects. Um, alternatively, you can press File, Import File. Right here, do it that way. Okay, now uh, take this footage and uh, make a new comp. And drop it into this comp box and there it is. It's a, uh, it already became a new comp. Okay, now um, here's where the fun begins. Uh, we're gonna start to apply some cool effects to the footage. Um, create a new solid, press Ctrl Y on your keyboard, and um, make it at least as wide as your footage, and preferably square, like I've done right here. And, um, okay, now there it is. Now, go to your effects and presets and find ramp, and apply a simple ramp to it. Now you uh, keep the colors black and white and it's gonna be a real simple ramp. Um, put the white uh, to about the center of the ramp, you don't have to be precise, and put the black to about the upper edge of your footage. Uh, Okay, now that that's done, you, you're gonna probably want to rename this solid to something a little more obvious. I'm going to call it uh, upper because uh, we are now going to uh, duplicate it. Press Ctrl D on your keyboard and I'm going to name this one, you guessed it, lower. And um, I'm going to put it under the upper for obvious reasons. And I'm going to turn off the upper for a second because I want to see uh, just the lowers uh, ramp. And I'm going to put the start of this ramp at exactly the opposite. I'm going to put the start at the bottom of the footage. So uh, now we have exactly the opposite ramp going. Now I want to change the transfer mode of this upper uh, ramp to Let's see, uh, press the toggle switches modes button if you don't see the transfer mode. Uh, put it to uh, multiply. So now you see, we can, we see the, um, we got both ramps going at once. And uh, now I'm going to take both of these layers and pre-comp them. Pre-comp them and call them something like, um, let's see, focal lens because we are going to do, use this uh, use this precomp layer as a uh, map for the uh, lens bl blur effect la later. Um, okay, so now we, we don't really need to see it because uh, the effect is going to use it anyway. So I'm going to turn off the layer uh, for now. Okay, now um, to make the uh, photo lens blur effect to apply it to the footage, I am going to um, create a new adjustment layer, uh, let's see, and apply, I can also rename it for, uh, you know, to be obvious, 
uh, you can call it camera lens or something. Now I'm going to apply a camera uh, lens effect, camera lens blur effect to it. And obviously you can apply this uh, effect right to the footage, but I like using separate adjustment layers just because you can turn one off and, uh, you know, just make them stackable and really have fun with them. Okay, now that you have your uh, camera lens uh, blur, uh, you can really go nuts with it. You can uh, play around with the uh, blur radius right here. Let's see. 10 goes about nicely here. Uh, it will impact quite nicely your render time, so you know, you don't want to go uh, overboard with it. Now, as for uh, the blur map, you want to choose the focal lens uh, pre-comp that we just made right here. And you can see that uh, it's already using the ramp layer as a uh, map for the blur. Right here it's real sharp, right here it's kind of blurry, and then again, right here it's sharp again. But this is the exact opposite of what we want, because we want the sharpness to be in the middle. So we are going to check the box marked invert uh, blur map. So right now you can see that it's sharp right here and sort of going blurry right near the uh, edges. But um, right now if you want to uh, sort of fiddle around with where you want the sharpness to be, uh, you can move around this, uh, these layers right here, the upper and lower, to get the white uh, nicely lined up along, let's say, this road, uh, this nice line right here, because um, as the van, let's see, I have a van, uh, a Vodnik, actually this is a uh, Barsuk, it's a modified Vodnik, and Anyone who's ever listened to the Russian badger uh, knows what a barsuk is. A barsuk is Russian for badger, obviously. So we have a, this uh, barsuk going down the road, and we want it to be real sharp, so we want this area to be sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new comp viewer side by side. I'm going to lock this one down. And in this one, I'm going to open, um, let's see, oh, focal lens. So, um, right now, I'm going to take these, both these layers, select both of them, click R for rotate, and I'm going to rotate them a bit to sort of face them along this road right here. And I'm going to move them a bit, maybe even scale them up because I didn't make them big enough. Um, right there, that looks sort of good. Uh, I can even move these, uh, the black of the ramp a little bit uh, in, so it would, you know, sort of trail off a bit sharper in the footage right here. So you can really play around with it, you know, get it to wherever you want. You can even do shapes. You don't have to uh, you know, use uh, just black and white solid. You can take a white solid, mask it out, and you know, then feather it. Have really nice uh, thing going. You can rotate the lower one a bit, and um, because the road sort of uh, goes like this, you can go and um, you know, really just play around with it. You can have a really sharp drop off at the lower one, so you know you can move it down a bit, so it sort of lines up with this roof right here. And that sort of nicely line, lines up, and I think the upper one needs to go a bit more here. Let's see, let's see, let's move the black back a bit, so we can see the top of the van, nice and sharp. Okay, well, that looks nice. Okay, now, um, this is all well and good, but we are going for that uh, painted model look. 
and um, if you notice, because, you know, models are uh, painted in a limited amount of colors, uh, they are sort of, uh, they don't have as many gradients and highlights as, you know, uh, a real world uh, building or a road would uh, have. So, or, or this shadow, you know, it has just about an infinite number of uh, blacks and grays and all, all sorts of shit going on here. So you want to sort of over exaggerate this and uh, uh, really with the color correct correction and uh, uh, go for the over exaggerated look as I say. Okay now uh, I'm going to add another um, adjustment layer call it something like uh, color correction and you can probably guess what effect I'm going to add uh, to it. I'm going to add curves to it. And I am also probably going to add uh, brightness. Where it is Yeah, there it is. Brightness and contrast. So, let's see. With the uh, curves, we want to go for... We want to sort of squash down the whites the highlights of it and maybe the blacks too you're, what you're going for is you want to sort of take all these dark colors and sort of uh, smash them until they are very much the same to where they don't have any gradient going for them and um sort of over exaggerated a bit but not too much okay well I think I think that's about it um, it's already starting to look a bit like a model you can play you can spend all day at this all right, so uh, now as for the brightness, I am going to turn the contrast down just a tad. Let's see, maybe 20, maybe less. Maybe, let's see, 15. And I am going to bump up the brightness just a bit to make the colors sort of pop. And I think that's pretty good. Yeah, there it is. Okay, well, you can sort of play more, a bit more, but with the brightness. Uh, the exact number will, you know, it will depend on your footage, but uh, you want it to really, you know, grab you by the neck and kick you in the balls, because you really want the uh, highlights to pop, and the blacks sort of look the same. I'm even going to go in here and exaggerate the blacks a bit um, that came out worse than it sounded in my head um, okay now comes the magical stop motion part uh, many ways to do this I'm sure uh, many more that I don't know about I just applied a uh, new uh, you guessed it a new adjustment layer called stop motion or something and um, what I did is I just applied the posturize time effect. There it is. To it. And um, you can apply the effect obviously directly to your footage. But um, I did it this way. Let's see. From a frame rate of 24 by default, let's change it to somewhere around, um, I don't know, 5. Uh, now, this will depend on the frame rate of your uh, original footage, and this does not mean that it will run at 5 frames per second, no. Uh, this will mean that After Effects will show it at the frame rate that you can uh, set in the comp settings, uh, which right now is 29.9, I believe, but it will treat this footage 
as if it was shot at 5 frames per second and it will decide from that uh, what frames to put in between them to get to 29.9 um, because it's still running at 29.9 but showing every uh, every 6 frame of the footage because 29.9 is roughly 30 and divide that by 5 and bingo you get 6 uh, you can of uh, you know you can of course fiddle with the numbers but you don't want to make it weird a weird number uh, find a good number uh, that sort of uh, goes well into your uh, original frame rate so you don't get weird skips and jumps and things like that uh, make it look uniform uh, now you can go ahead and render it out uh, add to render queue and I'm going to preview it right now just to see uh, how it turned out um, I think that's it oh uh, one more thing I forgot uh, before adding to queue you want to um, go to your composition settings go to advanced and check the box marked preserve frame rate um, when in render queue so and now when you add it to render queue it should have the same frame rate as in right here so um, that's it I think for the tutorial um, enjoy your dollhouse or toy town or whatever look you want to call it and um, if you learned something please leave a like and share this video and check out my other videos thanks